<laughs> All right, hi everybody, how you doing? Uh, my name is Tom Hall and um, I'm hosting this brand new series from the rock to the cloud. Uh, in this series of videos, we're going to be talking to some amazing people from around the Microsoft ecosystem talking about everything to do with Windows Server. Um, every episode I'm going to meet a special guest um, and they're going to help me explain a few things about some of our technology that quite frankly I probably don't understand and I'm pretty sure some of you don't too, but I know you're interested and I know you're excited. Um, if you have any questions during the episode or if there's anything you want to know, please drop the comments in below. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about something pretty big, um, something pretty exciting, and that's um, Azure Arc. Um, now, there's been a lot of buzz around this, um, so we really needed somebody clever and smart who knows what they're doing to come and talk about this. So for the next 30 minutes, I'm going to be catching up with Thomas Moira, uh, although I probably said that wrong. Um, Thomas, how do you say your name? What did we say again? I can't remember now. Hi, Tom. Uh, great to be here. Um, well, you call it Maurer, but you almost had it Maurer. there, so we were very close. Yeah. Maurer. Thomas Maurer. That's okay. That's my uh, dyslexic uh, dyslexic ability of reading names there. So Thomas Maurer. But, and, the, and Thomas, you're actually uh, a bit of a legend, apparently, uh, in the industry inside Germany. So we've, we've reached out across the continent to find um, the person who knows the most about this sort of subject that we can get our hands on, um, for, you know, for our audience today. So we're very excited to have you. So um, if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit more about it, because I've obviously picked you up a little bit, um, saying that you're probably the best person in Europe to talk about this. But um, what, in your own opinion, is your own intro of yourself? So first of all, you set the bar very, very high. I, I like during your interview, I get very blushed. I'm like, I'm probably red on camera right now. But yeah, so my <laughs> name is Thomas Maurer. I uh, work as a cloud advocate in our Azure engineering teams, and we, I'm part of a global team. And what we do on a very high level is actually we um, create and deliver content, such as, for example, this this video, uh, as well as, um, like, for example, docs, learn articles, blogs, uh, we speak at conferences and all of that good stuff. Um, uh, and again, it can be many, many different things. We also write little tools that might help you um, uh, working with technology. Um, but the other big part, which probably a lot of people don't see is we gather a lot of feedback. So we um, get yeah. some, we, we try to get feedback from our customers to understand what is what is working, what is not working, how can we make our products more uh, like better and uh, make you, our customers, more successful uh, with that. And this is, so this is a, a very big part of our job too. Um, and actually like helping customers to, again, to be more successful with the stuff <laughs> we do. And as you can see, that's probably why I'm here. I obviously did a lot of work on Windows Server or with the Windows Server. Um, and now, especially like over the last couple of years with Azure and especially uh, hybrid and multi-cloud technology such as Azure Arc and Azure Stack. Yeah, yeah. Well, and um, I mean, we've obviously got the right person because uh, that intro, I think, covers it all off. Uh, so <laughs> let's jump into the topic today, Thomas. Let's talk about Azure Arc, yeah? Let's go. Okay, so before we talk uh, about Azure Arc, oh, what is it all about? What, is, what problem are Microsoft trying to solve? What is the yep. challenge for the customers that Microsoft are trying to solve with this product? Because again, there's loads of products out there that Microsoft have got. Um, how is this any different to any other products? And, it, you know, there's a lot of buzz around it, but what are Microsoft trying to solve for? Yeah. So, I mean, if you're watching this video, this is probably not something really new to you, right? But what we see is that customer environments get increasingly complex, right? So there, there is a lot of like things added, like which add complexity for the IT departments, but also for developers, um, especially like with movements to the cloud and also with new technology and bring all that together. And that is what we try to address, right? And there are multiple reasons. We try, try to have a look at what are actually the reasons for it. And there are multiples of those, but three I wanna highlight are like the first one is really um, that IT needs to manage uh, hundreds, if not thousands of different applications, right? And these can be very modern applications written on like uh, past services in Azure, serverless technologies, um, containerized stuff. But then we also have this huge amount of traditional applications running on servers, yeah. some of them virtual and some of them uh, even physical, right? And guess what? Those servers, they're not just going away. And, and so we need to actually find a way to actually help IT departments and developers and IT administrators to actually manage all of these systems. The other part is what we also see is when we speak about management, 
we also have very diverse infrastructure when we look at customers. Some customers run their own data centers. They have stuff at some service providers. They run, they have edge locations like branch offices, retail stores, uh, and so on. Uh, and then last but not least, um, we see customers obviously also adopting in some sort of multi-cloud environments as well. Um, this sometimes is a strategy where they actually want to have multiple cloud providers. Um, and yeah. sometimes it's just like, his, the history of it, right? Probably some department uh, already started with a cloud provider, but then there was a general decision that Azure would be the best cloud provider for the company, which by the way is often very, very true. Um, uh, but <laughs> so they need to like somehow still manage all of that. And again, you can imagine that adding a cloud provider adds some additional complexity. So adding multiple cloud providers, obviously, like doesn't make things yeah. easier. So we try to help actually manage all this stuff and make it easier. Yeah, yeah. And and I suppose that you touched on a few things there. And I think one of the things that, um, you know, we're having more of these discussions in the UK with more of our partners about hybrid, about multi-cloud, like, you know, these are sort of massive buzz terms that are going around the industry, but like, why are they, why are they important? Because, because obviously it's, it, it just sounds to me like it's actually just more complication. So yeah, yeah. No, and and this is a fair point, right? And I think um, when when you probably speak to uh, Microsoft salespeople, very often you probably just think, oh well, it's all about the cloud. It's all about cloud. It's all about cloud, right? Uh, but that's not necessarily the case. I mean, obviously the cloud has a lot of advantages and can help you with a lot of things. But we know. Uh, that our customers need to run also stuff on prem. They want to run stuff on prem. They want to run stuff in a hybrid environment. And I always quote uh, Jason Sanders here, who did the keynote directly after Satya uh, at Ignite 2019, when we still had in-person conferences. And for those who don't know, Jason Sanders is actually the engineering lead of all the Azure services directly under Scott Guffrey. And he did what he said, basically, and that was, that was for me the most important part that someone so high up says this is like, hybrid is gonna be an end state for most of our customers and not just an in-between state until everything is moved to the cloud. So that means we actually need to help our customers in these hybrid environments, right? We wanna actually deliver yeah. technologies which helps them to make their on-premises environment even better, right? And, and actually help them with that. And we don't just want to convince them, well, just move everything over. No, no, we also want to see there is a need. This can be data sovereignty reasons. This can be networking challenges. This can be just like trust uh, things. So Azure is a great place to run stuff, but there are reasons why you yeah. probably can't run it there. So we want to help you. So I just want to get this right in my head. So hybrid is actually whatever you want whichever way you want it a bit of on-prem a bit of cloud a bit of private cloud mixed up in the way you need it and that is then you know you could have multiple clouds so you could have a <clears throat> other less reputable brand of cloud aws or something rubbish like that and then you could also then have azure you have all of those things all working at the same time that's then multi-cloud and so then how is azure helping with that yeah, so you can imagine now, now you end up in a situation where you run stuff in your own data center, you run stuff in Azure, you run stuff maybe at not a cloud provider, you run stuff at some edge locations. And for all these different places, very often what we see is you have different management tools. You have one management tool to manage your stuff on-prem, you have one management tool to manage your stuff in Azure, then also the other cloud provider provides some management stuff. And it, it's very tricky, right? And there's a lot of effort to actually uh, uh, use yeah. all of that. And it's again, a lot of complexity. And so we're trying to say, well, our management tools and that a lot of customers tell us this, like our management tool in Azure are actually so good to manage resources at, at scale even. Um, why not just enable customers to actually be able to use the Azure um, portal and the Azure resource manager and the Azure management tools to manage resources which are running outside of Azure. And that is exactly what Azure Arc uh, can do. Right, that sounds pretty amazing. Can you show us that, Thomas? Absolutely, let's uh, have a quick look <laughs> and switch to the demo here. <laughs> cool. Her it's almost Perfect. like we so, had that plan, Thomas, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it it's, it's looks very uh, like a big coincidence here. <laughs> um, so here I am in the Azure portal, right? And 
what I can do here is, for example, I can go uh, into the all resources uh, page. And what you can see here actually is all the Azure resources. Now, for those who are not that familiar with Azure or really haven't really played with Azure, uh, everything in Azure is basically an object. Like we learned that very, very, very soon that like in Azure, what you need to do is you, have, you need to have the right tools to manage this. And you can see here, um, I have different names here, and then you can see here the types. So you have virtual machines are an object, disk are an object, network interfaces are an object, um, databases, and so on. Basically, really everything is an object, and every object yeah. can then be grouped in a resource group, uh, and it's part of an Azure subscription, and it's basically joined to a location, right? And, and so you can then also go out and organize your things here. You can actually go out and say, well, okay, um, I, I, I want to list all my resources in a specific location, or I want to list all my virtual machines and so on. Now, again, customer told us this is great, but we want to actually, why, why can we not use this for resources which are outside of Azure? And that is what I want to quickly show you here. So here I can filter the types of resources I want to see. And what I'm going to show here, here is I'm going to um, select my Arc enabled servers. So I already joined a couple of servers to Azure, like these servers, these Arc enabled servers, these are systems, this can be Windows servers, this can be Linux servers, which are running outside of Azure, right? So I'm going to select these. And next to it, I want to see, for example, my Azure uh, virtual machines. So if I apply this mm. filter, it will now show me all my servers running in Azure and outside of Azure in a single view, right? So wow. this is, this is you can see here, if I zoom in here, uh, the blue ones are actually uh, the Azure virtual machines. And then you have the Azure Arc servers. You can see here my domain controller, my file servers, my Hyper-V server. These are all uh, now connected to Azure and they show, us, uh, show up as an object here. And you can also see that they are joined to an Azure resource group. They're part of a subscription. They basically look like an Azure resource. And that's not because they just look like it. They now are becoming an Azure resource. They are still running on premises in my own data center, in my case, underneath my desk here. Um, but they are yeah. now represented in Azure, right? And I can do that's... some cool things here now. I can add, for example, like auto filters. So what I can do here that's is something so we have packing. That's so simple, Thomas. Yep, I just very simple so stuff simple. Yeah, <laughs> very simple things to do. I can, for example, here then go and use something like we call tags. Tags is a great way of like tagging your resources and then organize them. So what I did is basically I have a cost center tag and then I want to see all my servers, let's say from cost center 1002 and I can apply this. And now it shows me all my servers which belong to a specific cost center. Um, and you can see here is a mix of um, service running in Azure and service running outside of Azure, right? So very easy stuff to do. You can now use the Azure control plane to uh, get that visibility uh, and organize your resources. Um, doesn't matter wherever they are running. So what, what you're so, saying is, is that Azure Arc helps our customers manage everything that is either Microsoft owned or in fact, non Microsoft owned or managed by Azure and put it all into like a one place, one kind of bucket. Um, exactly. We're calling yep. the Azure Resource Manager. Yep. Exactly, exactly. This is now, I can now add here my systems, right? I, I just showed you now servers. So most of them I, sh I show mm. you here, these are actually Windows servers, right? I added. But again, we also support Linux servers. They can be virtual or physical. Uh, they can run in your own data center. They can run in your branch office. They can run at another cloud provider. We also support, by the way, Kubernetes clusters, uh, data services, and much, much more, which we can add. Now, you might think, Thomas, this is great. Now we get the visibility, but I actually need to do something with it, right? And so uh, yeah. what I quickly want to show you is a thing called Azure policy. And this is especially for people who are interested into like making like configuration management, making sure that the systems are configured securely and compliant with the company policy. Now, again, if you're not familiar with Azure policy, Azure policy basically allows us to um, manage our Azure environment. Now the cloud obviously promised speed and agility. So everyone could go out and just deploy new virtual machines in, in a couple of seconds. But if you are responsible to manage that environment, uh, you kind of like need to 
have some policies in place which says, okay, not every developer or IT professional can just go out and deploy a uh, large Azure VM with hundreds of cores, uh, terabytes of memory, and uh, they drain your credit cards in like a couple of seconds, right? You actually want to uh, have there some, some policies in place, and that is what Azure policy can do. Now, another part of Azure policy is that we can actually go out and um, check if the operating systems of Azure Virtual Machines are, are configured in a compliant state and in a secure state. And with Azure Arc now, we can do this now for resources which are outside of Azure. So let me quickly show you this. What I would do usually, I would go to assignments and I would create a new assignment. Now, again, I, I'm going to jump through that really, really quickly because most of the stuff is probably not that interesting uh, at the beginning. But what you can do here is you can see here, I do a scope for all my resources in my Azure subscription, and then I'm going to select the definition. And we provide you with a ton of built-in definitions here. Um, so you can see here, we have different um, definitions. These can also be um, like things like UK official and UK NHS, right? So like this goes then out and does it an environment check based on this. And we have much, much more of these industry certifications here, if I scroll down. But we also have some which do just technical things like enable the Azure monitoring for VMs and stuff like that. So in my case, what I want to do is a very simple one as well, but a very important one, like audit my machines with insecure password settings. So I want to actually see if I have any machine servers in my environment, not just in Azure, but also like on-prem on uh, to see if they have insecure password settings. Now, think about this as like group policies on steroids, right? This is actually going to help me. This, this, these servers don't need, don't need to be domain joint. They don't need to be in the same domain. Um, I just get the only thing they need to have is the Azure Arc agent installed, and I'm going to show you how later how that works. Um, but so I select that, and now on the next page, which is new now, uh, you can see here if you worked with this before, you can see here now I can actually go in and say, well, also include my Arc connected servers. So again, meaning servers which are not part of Azure or not running in Azure. So I can go through and actually run through this. But this will then take a while until this goes out and checks all my servers. And so like in a good cooking show, I already prepared <laughs> this. Let, let me guess, one you made earlier, Thomas. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So well, I prepared something earlier. And yeah, yeah. you can actually go tasty. to... <laughs> you can actually go to the compliance view. And what you can see here is, first of all, I do a very bad job when it comes to compliance. That's number one. And the second thing here is you can see here, I have a couple of policies here, which I'm not compliant to, which are, assigned, which are assigned to my environment by either by me or by the people who are managing my stuff. Um, and you can okay. also see I have a couple of them which are compliant. But on the top here, you can see here the server policy to audit machines with insecure password settings. So this is the policy I just showed you. And you see, I'm not compliant, not with a single machine even. And if I scroll down, you can see here all the policies and you can actually figure out what it does, what it checks. Some of them do like maximum password age, which needs to be restricted and stuff like that, or where should the passwords be stored? And you can see here all the stuff here. But more interestingly, I obviously now for my environment want to know which resources are not compliant. So if I click on non-compliant resources, you can now see that I have my Azure virtual machines as well as my on-prem servers here next to each other. So you can see here the names, but if I scroll over here, you can see here that I have Microsoft yeah. Compute Virtual Machines. These are the Azure VMs. And then we have Microsoft Hybrid Compute Machines, which are basically servers running in your own data center uh, outside of Azure. And so I can actually see now, okay, look, the, all these servers are not really compliant. So I could reach out to the owner of that server, the administrator of that server, or if I'm that, I would obviously go out and go out and fix that, right? So that was basically the first first demo I wanted to show you here. Wow, Thomas, that is that is pretty damn cool. Um, and I didn't realize it was so powerful that you can do so many things across so many um, you know different different planes, right? Parallel, all at the same time, all at the same place. Um, and like yep. it is like that's that's blown me away, really, to be honest with you. Um, so. Um, how do we add a server into Azure Arc? I mean, that, that 
you know what I mean? Like we've, we've got the platform, I've got my virtual machines running, I've got, uh, you know, five locations, each one's got a server. Um, how, how do I go about doing that? Yep, absolutely. So uh, as you said, like as I showed you in the first demo now, um, it was really yeah. about, okay, I already have a couple of servers added, right? And the way I'm doing this, I can show you that in our next demo here. So if you want to try this out, and basically I highly encourage you to try this out. Um, there's ways you can create, I will also talk about that. If you haven't really played with Azure, you can create a free Azure subscription and then Azure Arc, yes. the base settings, and I will talk about this, they're even free, right? So you don't even pay for any any of that. Uh, as soon as you don't like, at one point I will show you more management technologies, and for them you will then actually pay. But to join this, like all the things that I showed you with like the sorting, I like sort and, and, and actually do tags. This is free. So what you would do, you would go to the search here, and you would basically just search for Azure Arc. Um, and if you then go to the Azure Arc uh, page here. I call it the, or we call it the Azure Arc Center. So this is the piece where you actually manage everything which comes in outside from Azure, right? So this is actually Azure Arc actually bridges the resources which are running outside of Azure. I hope you see what I did there, but. <laughs> um, so, so what yeah. you have here is um, again, different management technologies and I spoke about this. Uh, again, you can manage different things here. We have servers, Kubernetes clusters, SQL servers even, Azure Stack HCI, we have other things there as well. Um, but you ask me how to add a server. So what I go is I click on servers and you can see here, here are all the machines I already added. Um, now this is not your home, basically. This is my home here, so they run <laughs> my location. But to add a new one, I would just simply go to click on add. And it's actually very simple. So what is happening is we download an agent, we install that agent, and then we register that agent to our Azure environment. And that's it. Now, oh. to make this easier, we have two wizards here, which can help you um, actually adding these servers. Oh, one wait, is really- Sorry, sorry. Wait, wait, sorry. Whoa, 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 I'm gonna stop you there, right? So Microsoft has not just got one wizard working for them. They've got two wizards, like they've got it's... two Gandalfs working at Microsoft. Not just one. Why it's, do, we, it's need, why I, do I, we need two wizards? Why do we need two wizards at Microsoft? <laughs> it's it's very simple. So the first one, the first wizard is very good in adding single servers, right? So what happens is actually you, the, you generate the script, uh, which downloads the agent, installs the agent, and then registers that server. Now, the difference here is when you register that server, you need to log in with your Azure credentials, right? That makes sense. Uh, however, yeah. you can imagine that this is not really a good way of doing it if you add multiple servers, right? And so um, with this, we can use a service principle and that's basically just a, a ID basically you can use, which has the only, yeah. like the only um, access it has is actually to add, or the only permission it has is to, to actually add service to Azure. Now, I just okay. want to quickly show you what, what that means. Uh, what, how right, that so, we, like. so we're, we're going to see what Gandalf can do. Right, perfect. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so first, uh, if we start at wizard, we will see actually like, okay, um, the prerequisites again, very simple, by the way, that's actually perfect for actually telling you what you actually need to have. So you need to have outgoing um, internet, well, not internet traffic, but traffic to some of the Azure APIs. And you can find the list of these APIs right here on port 443. So all the, the communication is going outside and it's encrypted. And then you need to obviously have local admin rights uh, to install that agent. That is basically it, uh, what you need. Um, the next thing you can actually go and you can then select the, the Azure subscription you want to join it to. Uh, you would have your resource group, for example, um, where you would organize your Arc enabled servers or your applications in. And then you would select the, the, re the closest um, Azure region so for many of you, it's probably right now UK South. So this is only the region where the agent connects to, right? Where the APIs are hosted. Uh, I could also select here now, whatever I want. I could select a uh, US one as well. Uh, but for me, uh, West Europe is the closest one to my, my systems. Um, I can also select if it's a Windows server or Linux. And if it's behind the proxy, I could also configure that. The next one is we could use the tags. Those are the tags I basically showed you also with the cost center. Uh, we already give you a couple of them to help you organize, but you can also define your custom tags and you can also obviously do that later on. 
And then at the end, you get basically that script, which you then can copy uh, and download um, and then run on your machine. And again, this will just basically download uh, the, 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 the installer in the Windows world. This is an MSI file, then install that. And then the last one is running that command. Now, let me quickly switch to my um, machine here. So this server, um, in terms of time, I already installed that syst uh, that server, like the agent on it. But what happens is on that server called App01, I now have a, a process running. Uh, this is actually the process from the Azure Arc well, agent or the Azure Connected Machine agent, right? And that does the whole communication now from that machine. That makes it show up. Now, I get also a management tool here called the Azure Connected Machine Agent. And if I hit that, you can see here I have different options here uh, available on that machine. Um, again, can do a couple of different things. Um, but most importantly, what I can do is I can actually show some information now here. And this takes a second. And then you can see here some Azure related information. I can see what resource name down that server has. I can see in which resource group it's joined which Azure subscription, which Azure tenant, which VM ID this server has, um, and if all mm. the services are, services are running. Now, again, this is this is pretty cool here um, uh, to, to manage that. Now, what happens after install that, you can see here that server shows up here. And if I go to that server, you can see here now, this is how it looks like when it's connected. And this is now how it looks like in the Azure portal. Brilliant. And so once you've got uh, a server onboarded to Azure Arc, what can you do with it? <laughs> like, great, yeah. I've got it there. Yep. <laughs> As you can see, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, I, I completely get it. There is obviously much, be much more than Thomas just showed us, right? Like showing that up, doing some policy stuff, this is all great. But I obviously need, to, I, as a Windows Server Administrator, I probably need to do more um, than just uh, have a look at servers, right, the whole day. So, uh, as you can see, it looks like an Azure resource. You can see here the different tags. You can also see here some additional information. I can also see that this server is joined to a local uh, domain. Again, it doesn't need to be, but it can. Um, you can see here on the left side, I can do some role-based access control, for example. So I could now in the in Azure only give permission to people who actually need to manage that server and not like to everyone. And then I get a couple of awesome things here. So the first thing I want to show you is Security Center. So I enabled Security Center, so I get Azure Defender for Windows Server. And that means I also get information about how the system is not configured securely. So I have a couple of uh, recommendations here, and we also give them basically a priority how fast you should take care of it. So for example, in this scenario, we see that I did not have all my system updates installed um, and I should probably do that to make sure everything is okay. <laughs> Thomas, seriously, right? You're, you're uncompliant and you're not up to date. Like this is, like, I'm, I, I'm a horrible cost. admin. I mean... <laughs> I, I'm really a horrible admin, but um, again, <laughs> Azure Arc and the Azure control plane is obviously here to help me to get that visibility and to see like, hey, Thomas, you do actually a bad job. So let's better go out yeah. and fix this, right? Um, so yeah, what do yeah. we actually have to fix this? What we also have is a thing, and I need to see if we have that available here, is called Azure Monitor. So I can not only like get these recommend security recommendations, I also get a monitoring uh, view here. So the first thing I want to show you here is the map view. This basically lists my server here in the middle, and it shows me to which endpoints or other servers this server is connecting. So I get this awesome map to see, okay, this one is, for example, connecting to a couple of public IP addresses on that specific port, but it does also connect to some, for example, local ports here as well. I can see here that it connects to some like internal servers as well. And then obviously I get the simple performance monitoring. Um, well, it's not that simple, but um, like the, the things you need, right? You need to know if there's enough disk space, how is your CPU utilization, your memory utilization. You get all that information directly here and you can even configure uh, alerts here. And again, think about this for a moment. This is now now for one server, right? But you can configure mm -hmm. that over all your servers. Doesn't matter where they're running, right? And you can control it from Azure, like in a single control plane. That's, uh, that's unbelievably have... simple. It's unbelievably yep. simple. Yep. The only installing the agent, clicking on enable, 
and that's it basically it's, there's no like magic i don't need to install anything i don't like in terms of like i need to set up a monitoring tool or anything uh it's just there yeah. and we obviously update like add more features to azure monitor and do all the other azure service pretty regularly yeah um another part is obviously sometimes you need to deal with logs so what we have here is for example with log analytics uh we can actually send all the system logs of a server to azure to a log analytics workspace and then I can, for example, run here a query. And now I can run the performance query here. And you can see here down here, I get all these performance logs. Um, again, in terms of time, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but we also can have the security logs and all that, like basically all the event logs, whatever I want to enable, I can, I can actually put this in and get all that information directly shown here. Now, speaking of that, I can also obviously want to see what else is going on. So I can enable change tracking for my server. So what I have here is I can see all the changes happening to my server. So you can see here if some services changed, if there were some uh, changes made to the system, I can see that. I can also get a software inventory of that system. So I see all, for example, in this case, like there's not much software on that server, but all the updates installed and I could go and search for something. If I, I want to look if something is installed, like a specific type of software, I could do, browse to do this. You need a, do you need a new license, Thomas? We can, we can help you out with that. Uh, maybe we can sell <laughs> you a new license. I, I, I would be happy to have some sort of software I could install. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but you can actually see that, like what, what is going on on that system, right? And then um, you saw here on the left side, I can also go and have a policy. Uh, view here where I now see all the policies again just assigned to this server I don't see all the policies I just see the ones which are assigned to me now and I can see here well I'm not compliant with two and again it's the same thing as I showed before but now in the context of just one server the other big thing admins obviously need to do is update management right this is like something which regularly comes up and you can see here I'm also yeah. as, as I said before security center already told me you are doing a bad job. You have updates that you need to install. Now, if you click on update management, you can see here all the missing updates. Um, I can see some of them are just uh, defender definitions, which I don't care so much, but there's, for example, the arc agent even, which is not up to date, but there's obviously would also show all the other Windows updates as well. And now what I can do to fix this is actually schedule an update deployment. I would give that a name. Let's call that uh, server. Um, doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just for me to recognize it already detected that this is a Windows server. Uh, I can configure the maintenance window. Um, I can say, well, reboot if required. That sounds like a good option, but I can also say always reboot if I want to or never. And then I go out into scheduling part and now I can say update now, which would mean in the next five to 10 minutes, it would basically update that server. And obviously after that reboot it uh, if needed. Uh, however, since we are in the middle of a demo here, it's probably not a good idea. So let's we schedule this for later so I can schedule this. And what you can also see here, I can make that even a recurring task. So actually I can say, well, I want this server to be updated every Tuesday night, for example, like whatever I want to, or every, every Thursday night or whatever, um, I can do that. And then I can do some other stuff here. I can basically say which update classifications should be installed, which updates should be included, excluded. I can even run some post and pre-scripts here. And at the end, I review it and create that task. And that would then basically go out and, and patch that server to the um, configured time. Now, you probably say, well, Thomas, I have 100 servers. I don't want to do that per server, right? So yes, so if you see here in the menu, you can see manage multiple machines and that directly takes you to our Azure Automation account, account with the update management solution. And here you basically get all the update, all the systems uh, here running in Azure, running outside of Azure. And you can see here if they're compliant and non-compliant. And here I could then also go and update uh, these systems. And the difference here is um, I could have the exact same options. I can also schedule it, um, make it recurring tasks, but I can now select a group of servers. So I can set yeah. and say like, okay, let's do, let's do group one of all the servers, like the main controller one, file server one and all that on Tuesday night. And then I can create a second group of servers on um, like the main controller two and stuff like that on Thursday nights. And so I make sure that like, if something goes wrong, I still have all the other servers available. And again, I get that single. So, is this, 
so simple because it's just basically like setting up a group policy, uh, you know, on a bigger scale. Um, yeah, it, it's just uh, yep. so it's just, just so simple. I love it. Um, and so, <coughs> oh, pardon me, dying there. Um, <laughs> just uh, concentrating so much there that I forgot to breathe. Um, that's how exciting your demo was, Thomas. Um, the uh, you know, you said the Azure app is not just about supporting servers, but there's other services that it can do, and it's not just servers. It's not just cloud service, it's not just Azure, it's not just on-prem, but you mentioned that it can do other things. What other things can it do? Because that is um, surely of interest to people. Yep, absolutely. So again, you can, what we, we, we distinguish a little bit between like Azure Arc enabled infrastructure. So that means like joining existing infrastructure. Again, this can be servers, Linux servers, Windows servers, physical, virtual, doesn't matter where they're running. We have Kubernetes clusters. And again, this doesn't mean that it's only a Microsoft Hold flavored up. Kubernetes Hold cluster. Kubernetes cl cl you just said that like it was just like, you just flashed through it. Just give us a double, double, double down on Kubernetes for us because, um, you know, some people yep, might not want to know what you're on about. Absolutely. So Kubernetes cluster is basically the orchestrator to like organize your containerized apps, right? And we see a lot of customers running this uh, inside Azure, but also outside of Azure um, in their own data centers and at other places as well. And these need to be managed yeah. in a similar way as like, for example, servers do, right? Um, so we have tools like the monitoring part I showed you for servers. We can also enable that specifically for Kubernetes clusters. Obviously you get some additional information about the containers and all like, Kubernetes sure. specific things. We can enable, for example, um, the security center part. So you actually see if you're configured securely. We can enable policies, yeah. like I showed you with servers, to make sure that your Kubernetes cluster is uh, configured in a compliant state. And then something we can also do there, and that's very important, is uh, app deployment and kind of like at scale, right? So again, um, okay. if you're maybe this is more for DevOps and developer people, but if you, for example, need to update your containerized applications on a Kubernetes cluster or deploy them even, um, you can now do that and configure that directly within the Azure portal from a technology like we call it GitOps. So what you do is you check in your application code into a Git repository and you tell the Kubernetes clusters to regularly check that Git repository for changes. And as soon as there's a change to the code, um, like if you do deploy an update to it, yeah, right. it grabs that application and deploys it on the Kubernetes cluster. Now you would say, well, if I have one Kubernetes cluster, why don't I do that directly or something? But obviously if you have one, at least you get to this, this CIDC pipeline, uh, which you can work on. So everything is actually uh, checked in and you have an, a nice history of what's happened. And secondly, think about it. If you have hundreds of Kubernetes clusters running in different locations, you can now yeah go out and update these applications running on these Kubernetes clusters within 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 seconds, right? And then so that yeah. that is pretty awesome as well. So it's, then, it's, it's all about it's all about scale then, isn't it, Thomas? That's what you're saying. It's all about scale. Uh, it can be. It's it's about scale, absolutely. So it scales very, very, very well. If also with servers. Um, but I see already a lot, a lot of like small companies taking care, taking advantage of this, right? If you have only a couple of servers, for example, running in, in your in your branch office or something like that, that already yeah. can Azure can already help you giving that experience. It's it's really a good mix. Um, it, it absolutely is about scale, but you can also use it in very small environments. Like we, I, I talk to very small customers which do only a couple of like a handful of servers, if you will. But they're so happy that yeah. they now don't need a VPN to manage this. They don't need to do like any fancy yeah, yeah. stuff. They just log into the Azure portal and they can actually go out and deploy yeah. updates and other stuff directly from there. Yeah. So, right. I've got it now, right? It's about scale if you want it or simplicity if you need it. Got it. There we are. I want about creating like a, some, buzz, some buzz terms there. So scale if you want it, simplicity if you need it. I love it. Azure Arc. I'm sold. And so where can people find out more information, Thomas? Where, like, I mean, obviously they haven't all got access to you. So if they haven't got access to, uh, to, to Thomas, where can they get the information they need? So there are a couple of places where you can go. So obviously the Microsoft docs are a great place to actually learn about these technologies where we have all the documentation for Azure Arc, uh, for all this stuff. We also have um, a Microsoft 
learn module. So Microsoft Learn, for those who don't know, it's a free learning platform um, with like videos, with text, with 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 uh, little questions for you to actually see if you understand it. But also in many cases, um, we have like uh, little sandboxes. So if you don't have an Azure subscription and you don't want to sign up and you don't like, for example, you don't have a credit card available, you don't want to sign up with your credit card. Um, you don't have to, because there we give you a sandbox for a couple of hours a day where you can play with your Azure environment. And again, it's not just for Azure Arc, it's also for other Azure technology. It's also for even um, Microsoft 365 technology. So for all these spaces as well. And it also covers, for example, the Azure Arc enabled data um, services part. And that one allows you yeah. to actually run uh, Azure SQL outside in your, in your data center. And then last but not least, I also want to highlight the Azure Arc Jumpstart project. So this is a very good place to go, uh, is azurearcjumpstart.io. And if you want to try it out, they build a lot of automation to build all these environments, to onboard resources, to like really check it out and actually play with it without you or me investing a lot of time setting things up. Um, you can really quickly take advantage of all the automation they built. Um, to, to like, if you want to do a presentation in your company, uh, if you want to do a POC in your company, um, that is really, really helpful. Sweet. So, um, I can't remember all of that, but I did write, uh, most of it down. Uh, but what we will do is we'll make sure that that information is in, uh, the description, uh, of, of, of this, where we post it so that people can go and look at all that amazing resource because A, there's a ton of free stuff. Uh, and B, um, you know, people are going to need their own Thomas if they're going to if they're going to go and set all this stuff up. So, um, Thomas, amazing. Um, so this is um, this is. I, re I really hate saying this is the fun bit, um, but it's more the unknown bit. So um, we've we've decided uh, in our infinite wisdom that um, that we're going to have a uh, a server meme review. Now, um, a couple of colleagues of mine there and the producers have all got together and oh, I've not seen this, right? So I actually don't know what's going to happen. Um, and apparently, um, because I'm not uh, a server uh, architect or, a, you know, um, someone like yourself, apparently I might not get this, but I think I think apparently you're going to find this very funny. Um, so um, we'd love to know your thoughts on, on these memes. We'd love to get a rating. Um, and you know a comment from the audience as well, but um, let's let's sort of actually gauge your reaction to uh, to a couple of memes. So meme one, uh, let's see what happens. I don't. I'm, this is literally brand new. We don't know if this is going to work. So meme one, what what the hell is this? Uh, when you're working <laughs> in a server of maintenance um, and you have to unplug and replug, I mean, <laughs> Thomas, have you been it's... in that situation? I mean, I get it. Like it's funny. Uh... <laughs> it, it, not not that extreme, but um, yes. Yeah, so I I seen very very like I I don't know if you can say it, but very bad things in my life. And um, yes, this <laughs> these things sound look similar to this. And well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> Okay, right. Okay, so um, obviously, if you if you've got memes, um, feel free to post them uh, in in the comment section. Um, but Thomas, we're going to look at we're going to look at the second meme. I think we just uh, uh, I think we just get through this now because uh, you know obviously <laughs> <laughs> what we really do when a server is down. Now, Thomas, that, that surely can't be you with all your uncompliance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think that could be me and looking at my compliance state. Absolutely, yeah. No, this is yeah. Sometimes I I remember these times when I was working as a like system administrator, right? And we had so many different systems, uh, like different like hardware systems, different rate controllers and stuff like that. And things would obviously break all the time. And then you needed to actually not, uh, like think, okay, how uh, really hope that like sometimes you just like. I reboot this and hopefully it comes back up, right? It's like, <laughs> and I know everyone was waiting. I actually remember, um, like, it was not a server. It was not like, it was like a, a web platform. And I remember, like, something didn't work anymore. And I remember, like, the CTO of the company and a couple of engineers, and we were all sitting around, like, one computer. And no one didn't know what to do anymore. And we said, okay, let's just reboot it. But however, the server was like in another country, right? It would have been hours away and we would need some remote hands gone. So like everyone was waiting for it and someone pressed the button to reboot the system. And we were like all, okay, hopefully it comes back up. Hopefully it comes back up. Please, um, please, please. Uh, <laughs> 
but and, and, and luckily i spoiler alert it did so everything went fine but uh <laughs> cool uh, okay well look, um honestly uh if you're watching this and you've seen funny memes or you want to rate those memes um let us know appreciate that um didn't know what was going to happen there but i think it worked out all right um we were obviously praying to the meme gods um so um before we before we wrap up thomas um let's just recap the points that we covered so you know what were the top two things uh would you you would say we covered in this episode so I think the most important takeaway here is really, especially if you work with Windows Server in your on-prem environment um, and and you never really worked with Azure before, I think your takeaway can be that um, Azure technology is not just to run stuff in Azure, but it can also be there to make your on-premises environment even better, right? It really wants, we want to help you there. We don't say, well, look, uh, it's just to move everything to Azure. I mean, of course, there are some advantages if you do move things to Azure in some cases, but we completely understand that you can't move everything, that you don't want to move everything. And in that case, like at Azure, Azure technologies like Azure Arc and all our management technologies can make things uh, better for you. That is number one. And so the second one I would say is really about the different management technologies you have here. You saw I went uh, did a lot of demo here. Um, so actually doing update management directly from the cloud, making sure that everything is compliant, getting all this information um, uh, in one single place, doing the monitoring. I think that can really help you. So if you're a uh, Windows Server admin um, or, or even a decision maker or whoever is in charge of that, you probably want to have a look at this and try it out. Again, some of the features are even free. Some of the features then cost some, some sort of money. But um, I think it's a really good place to actually have a look and see if Azure Arc can fill your need uh, and make your life hopefully easier. Anything that we can make our lives easier, Thomas. And look, I think that's the thing that I took from it. It's it's that scale uh, scale if you scale if you need the scale if you want it and simplicity when you need it. Um, so that's my um, that's my marketing spiel version of what you said. But yeah, that it's. It's phenomenal. And Thomas, thank you so much for your time today. It's been really special. And you know what? I actually always love talking to people who, who genuinely are experts because it makes such a difference to um, A, to me, to my understanding, but also hopefully the audience and, you know, them understanding what technology is actually available for them. Because I think, I think there's a big misconception in our market that, that these things are a secret. They're not a secret. We just don't tell enough people about it. And actually, that's the thing that I've learned from uh, you know Azure Arc today. Um, actually, it just it, it's accessible and it allows people, like you said, to maximise that on-prem solution with that cloud. And that ultimately is hybrid, and that's what everyone's talking about. So, look, you've in half an hour made that really, really simple and shown us some absolutely um, you know simple demos that people can get their hands on and go out and, uh, and, and practice today. So, Thomas, thank you so much. Will be the, the 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 classic bow. I feel like I'll be doing that at the end of every episode. Um, so, look, everybody, thank you so much for watching this episode um, from uh, the rock to the cloud. Um, keep your eye out for um, what's coming next. We're going to have more exciting episodes coming soon. And remember, if you've got any thoughts or comments, or you know, you just simply want to get in touch, make sure you drop a comment into the comment section. So, thank you very much for listening today. Uh, I've been your host, Tom Hall, and um, yeah, hopefully um, you've learned as much as I have, because uh, certainly Thomas has blown my mind. Thanks a lot. Cheers, everybody.